Welcome to Push Culture News. I'm Brian Davenport. Thank you for joining us. Kicking things off today, the Skateboarders Journal magazine has its first issue with the printer right now. The magazine is run by legendary Jack Smith, who was involved in the first 1975 Signal Hill, California downhill event. He's also skateboarded across America three times. Who better to be running a new publication for our industry? Stacy Peralta's I Am a Skateboarder will be featured in the very first issue, but don't expect to get this issue in your next hard goods order for free. You need to subscribe on the Facebook page or at skateboardersjournal.com or you'll be able to pick it up at your local Barnes & Noble. In other news, Max Myers, who you know from the Arbor team, is now the Arbor team brand manager. Congratulations, Max went to UCSB, recently graduated, and Max got a job. Congratulations. Argentina Longboard Day happened not long ago and was well documented by our good friend Aaron Innovolton, so be sure to check out his video on the Rain and Loaded Ambassador channels. La Noche en Negro happened in Madrid. It was a unifying event across Europe, brought several different crews into Spain to skate together, hang out together, and talk about what it's going to take to unify the European scene. We had an opportunity to sit down with London Longboard's Bimmy and talk about how it went. Yeah, so one of the guys in Longboard Europe, his name is Ra, from Madrid, and he organized this weekend called La Noche Negra. It's been going on for the past five years. This was the fifth edition. But we had three, three days of amazing longboarding, really, really good stuff. Skated Miano, skated loads of local spots with hundreds of people, six, seven hundred people. Where was everybody coming from? The f okay, we had people from France, England, Sweden, Holland, Poland, and loads of other people from the north of Spain and Portugal. We had some Portuguese people there as well. There were loads of people from everywhere. In IGSA news, while the Broadway bomb was happening in New York City, Bob Osman was hosting Benelli, the U.S. Nationals in San Dimas, California. At 17 years old and riding for Sector 9, AJ Haibi topped the podium at the U.S. Nationals this year. Congratulations, AJ. He also took second place at the Soldiers at Downhill this year in Ohio. We had the opportunity to be there to race and film that event, so make sure you check out our coverage. Moving on, the first stop on the Sudamericano Tour was in Colombia on October 16th at the Festival de la Bajara. Juliano Casimiro from Brazil took top honors there. The second stop on October 30th was in Peru at the Copa de los Andes. Canadian Dylan Stevens won that one. The third stop on the tour this year, November 6th in Teutonia, Brazil, was the Malarara Pro, which saw this year's IGSA World Championship event. Congratulations to all the participants, as this is an especially fast course, the fastest on the, on the world tour, to be exact. De Lewis Silva came in third, Danky Dean in second, and Misha Werbin with his first World Championship event win, took first place. Congratulations, Misha. Very notable, Kevin Reimer competed in Teutonia. Not only did he compete after being taken out earlier in this season with a broken ankle, but he came in a very strong fourth place finish. Congratulations, Kevin. We look forward to seeing you on the tour next year. The most notable competitor in the South American series this year by far has been Katie Skady Nielsen riding for Land Yachts out of Vancouver. She's topped the podium in the female division in all three races so far. There will be one more World Cup Series stop on the IGSA Tour this year. It's going to be in South Africa at the Hot Heels race. Make sure you stay up to date with all the IGSA information at IGSAWorldCup.com. In the media world, in comparison to the standard one-off skate video, which we're so used to seeing, there has been multiple series being released recently. Uh, you're all very familiar with Long Treks on Skate Decks. Paul, Aaron, and Adam already conquered South America, and they're at it again. They've recently released episode 5 of their trip around Morocco. They're showing you lots of culture, not just skateboarding. First of all, use your brains, not your boards. So drive a tour bus, do take a car, do, do anything but what we're doing to ourselves. <laughs> In This Roads episode 1, Yellow Horizons, has recently been released. It's directed by Juan Reyes and features the Longboard Girls crew. They invited Loaded's Amanda Powell as well as Rain's Marissa Nunez out to Spain to hop in the van and travel around for two weeks skating in some of the most beautiful country. Be sure to check it out. The Arbor Collective sent their team up into the Sierra Mountains to film the Get Elevated Tour. One thing that's particularly interesting about this video series and the Arbor team in general is they skate well, fast, and tight. Skating in a tight pack 
you must be able to trust the riders that you're riding with. These guys skate together and they skate well. It's something that we can all learn from. Greener Pastures, produced by Patrick Switzer, has finally been released. And as to be expected, it is extraordinary. Mostly due to the fact that they brought together some of the best riders on some of the best hills. And they are setting a standard and raising the bar for longboard media. We had the opportunity to talk with John Barnett about some of the ins and outs and how the trip went. John, tell us a little bit about your experience in Europe. Well, Greener's Pastures was a pretty an amazing experience because you just got a big crew of riders who are all so stoked. And man, the roads in Switzerland are like nowhere else. They are really intense roads and it was just really fun to get a ride down those roads with those people and just like feed off each other's energy. And oh, we had to wait for Pat sometimes, but you know, like anybody knows Pat knows that that happens, you know, peace with time. Yeah, there was a very high level of talent traveling around Europe with you guys. What was it like getting to hit some of those really gnarly roads with some of the best racers? It was pretty intense because like every road you were two feet behind somebody and somebody was two feet behind you. So you were just like, you didn't have a lot of chance to blow anything. And then Yvonne Labar was there and he, he's like, he's a solid, solid skater, but he, he thinks it's fun to scare people. So he grabs stink bug and like you'll be coming out of a corner and if Avant's behind you, you can never look back. Because if you do, he's right on you trying to rub your wheels and he's smiling and waving his camera at you as he's doing it. And like people were freaking out and a lot of times I ended up having to ride in front of him because people were like, I don't want Yvonne behind me. How was that tension in the bus? Oh man, there was no tension. Like everybody, it was just a fun time there. So what was something that you learned that really helped you improve as a rider during Greener Pastures? It was, it was crazy riding around the, uh, the film camera and filming sucks. That's the other thing, you know, like Greener Pastures looks really cool and it was awesome to do, but sometimes just like some of the roads, man, I got blue wheels. Cause like we got there and I wanted to ride the road and then they'd only let us ride little sections. And it was like, no, why can't we? And it got too dark. And it was like the biggest tease. It was brutal. Man. Well, John, thank you again right, so man. much. Greener Pastures takes place in Switzerland. Swiss chocolate, Swiss watches, Swiss army knives, they know quality products. FiberTech Longboards deserves to be on that list as well. They use some of the highest production quality standards that we have ever seen in the longboard market. This is the Flying Pan Drop 960. It's designed as a super light downhill and free ride board for advanced and experienced riders. If you'd like to check more out about FiberTech, you can visit them at FiberTech.ch. We're now here with Jeff Fine, the co-winner of the most recent Adrenalina Marathon. Jeff, thank you for joining us. Hey, Ryan. Well, pleasure to be here. Thank you. Um, Jeff, you've had a busy year. I know that it's been a successful year. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, yeah, it's been pretty crazy. Um, been doing a lot of racing. Uh, started out with Chief Ladiga, 180 miler this year. Did four Adrenalina races. Um, did a couple downhill races. Broadway Bomb. And just training to try and keep up with, uh, with all of those demands. Um, at the Chief Ladiga race, I knew that was a, a three-day event, and if I remember correctly, you got hurt on day two? Never saw the course before, didn't know what I was getting into, and I was wearing shoes that really weren't very good for foot breaking, so um, I went off into the grass, tore my butt open, uh, it was just like a big gaping hole on my side, and luckily I had no idea because I don't know if I'd have finished if I'd ever looked down at it. Tell us about your board that you've been racing all, these, all this year. Sure. Uh, this board I actually designed as a collaboration project with Scott Moore of Subsonic Skateboards um, and then myself with Bustin. So um, we're looking to release this next year, hopefully. Uh, it kind of all works together as a system. Um, I'm running 125 millimeter surf rods RKP trucks um, and really big wheels, uh, 85s in the back, 77s in the front. And then the board is, is wedged um, basically to allow the back with the 35 degree truck, it's flipped around and it, and it equates to zero degrees, no turn in the back at all. And then the front is a 25 degree wedge with a 35 degree truck and 60 degrees in the front. So it's 60 zero. Um, basically, it's a really, really aggressive pumping setup. It allows me to pump pretty much as fast or faster than, uh, than race pace in, in, a, in a push race. So you and Paul Kent have obviously been setting the new standard for that. What is race pace these days? That's right about 17 miles per hour. So um, I've got this thing pumping up to about 19 miles per hour. What's it been like over the course of this year having an equally, um, equally capable competitor to work with? 
Um, man, I I really got to say there's there's no better person to race against other than Paul Kent. Um, I've learned a lot from him this year, and, and I think maybe he's learned a little bit from me too. Um, but we're always going back and forth, uh, trading information, um, ideas, training techniques, um, nutritional stuff. He's big on that. Uh, I've I started racing this year and like tech, you know, tight tight uh, tech gear because of him. I think without without him, I'd probably you know wouldn't train very hard because I'd I'd think that I could go into every race and just you know make it happen. <laughs> well, Jeff, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun watching you race this year. Thanks, Brian. Once again, this is Push Culture News. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And stay up to date so we can keep you informed.